when Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Where? In Jerusalem first and then in Samaria and in Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. But notice the guiltiest city was the first priority for His grace. What do you want to touch on here in this kind of epic location, kind of an epic evening afternoon here in Jerusalem? What do you want to, you know, when you want I, to touch on here? When I look at this, uh, the entire panoramic view, and where better than from here, this perspective, to imagine the Temple of Solomon standing there for many years, and then when the children of Israel started committing idolatry, and that's one sin that God will not tolerate because they committed many sins, but they still offer the, the lamb sacrifices, mm -hmm. right? So their sin was covered, virtually covered. Yeah. But the moment they commit idolatry, what happened? They worship wow. other gods, which means they stop offering the sacrifices. There was no more covering. God sent Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and brought them out into captivity for 70 years. Now, before that happened, prophet Ezekiel saw the glory of God lift up from the temple. He saw the glory of God above the temple, lingering, almost as if he doesn't want to leave. And then after that, the next thing he saw was it moved slowly to the threshold of the temple and then moved slowly, ever so slowly to the eastern gate on the other side. Wow. And again, it lingered. It's almost like strong crying, wow. wailing. Can you imagine our Lord Jesus, our beautiful Savior, wailing? It, it's, it's not like the tears that he wept at Lazarus' tomb. You know, he wept quietly, all right? But the Greek word he used is he wept over Israel, over Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I wish I could have gathered you under my arms like, like a mother hand would gather her chicks, but you would not. They rejected the Lord Jesus and by so doing, they rejected their protection. And that's the story of the Jewish suffering for these past 2,000 years. It's not that God doesn't want to cover or protect them. It's that He's waiting for them to say and acknowledge Him. I want to be protected. I want to be loved by you. You have the consent to be saved. You have the consent to be loved. But notice the, the, the heartbeat of Jesus weeping over Israel. Israel, oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He saw their sufferings. He saw the future, what would happen, 80, 70 and beyond. And He says, I want so much to gather you. And He wept with tears. And you not see my face again until you say, Barukva Bashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that, that glory that Ezekiel saw now over the Eastern Gate went all the way to the Mount of Olives. And all of a sudden, psh, it disappeared. That was in the Old Testament. So we say today, like when you sin, God leaves you just like that. Yeah. But notice, after Jesus died and rose again from the dead, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah glory of God came back, right here in Jerusalem, it came like a rushing mighty wind. <laughs> when He leaves, He leaves ever so slowly because we have sinned. Wow. But when He comes, <laughs> He comes like a rushing mighty wind. We hear the opposite. We hear like, when you sin, that's it. Bam. He's gone, His presence yeah. is gone, man. Man, I, as I was preaching, you were chewing, you come, he's gone. I don't feel his presence no more. You know, it's like that. It's the opposite, actually. He's so reluctant to leave, but today he doesn't leave us anymore. He'll never forsake us, ne never leave us. He has promised us that. But even in the Old Testament, he leaves ever so slowly. My goodness. He comes like a rushing mighty wind. Mm. So eager to fill us up. Mm. Amen. He's more eager for you to have the Holy Spirit and His fullness than you are to have Him. Mm. See the difference? And that's, yeah. that's why grace is not natural. Mm. Do good, get good. Do bad, get bad. Every system of the world understands that. Mm -hmm. Every form of morality understands that. But to teach you can receive good you don't deserve. Mm -hmm. Because another received all the bad that he didn't deserve. That takes the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to elucidate. It takes the Holy Spirit to uncover and unveil the loveliness of Jesus. It doesn't take the Holy Spirit to teach, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. Look at the world, what's happening in the world? Talk about all the, you know? But it takes the Holy Spirit to, to have God's perspective. Where sin increased, grace superabounds. Now think about it. When Jesus rose from the dead, 
Jesus says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Where? In Jerusalem first and then in Samaria and in Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. But notice the guiltiest city was the first priority mm. for His grace. Mm. Wow, expedition, promised land. We are in the midst of it and uh, a good day is to be on an expedition <laughs> in the promised land with Joseph Prince. As we look this way, mm -hmm. everything to our senses is ancient. Uh, what we see are ancient stones. We see mm -hmm. stones that were carved in the Herod period. Right. You know, you yeah. see a lot of things that look old, not modern. But in as much as this city mm -hmm. of Jerusalem represents the past, it also represents the future. Yes. What an interesting thing to kind of talk yes. about right here and what we're seeing here today. Yeah, definitely when you come to Israel, and if you always have a perspective, it's all in the past, all this is just historic, you know, look at Israel today, um, it's different. No, it's not. <laughs> this is the Israel he's coming back for. Wow. The modern day Israel. And the rapture is not the coming, the coming of Jesus to the Mount of Olives when he comes back to, to rule and reign, that 1,000 year of millennial rule. The rapture will happen first and it can happen anytime, anytime. <laughs> and Matt, <laughs> You'll be young again, man. I love that. All right. Um, she's waiting for that time. But, you know, and forever healthy, for forever, yeah, forever it. strong, you know, never, never, never again falling sick or even feeling fatigued, you know, forever. Not, not floating around, you know, but having a body, a glorified body. Heaven is a real place. It's more real. It's more real than, than our, our physical presence right now. Mm -hmm. We can't imagine it. So the moment someone's heart just stop beating, they step out and they'll say, man, I feel so alive. Mm. Wow. And they'll say, what's that good looking cops down there? <laughs> yeah. It's like, we, we can't imagine it because death has lost its sting. Wow. You know, when, when David lost his child, David says, he will not come to me, but I shall go to him. Mm. He's talking about the child is somewhere. The child is with the Lord. Yeah. Being raised by the angels. And, and I, I lost a child when I was... Uh, um, um, I think about in my 40s, you know, we, we had one in between and we lost the child, but the Lord gave me this revelation. Your child is growing up. So every year I'm counting, how old is she now? My goodness. You know, in heaven, how old is she now? She would, she would have been this and I'll see her one day. Yeah. And the rapture, we can happen anytime in the twinkling of an eye. I see that twinkle in your <laughs> eye. That's it. We have a brand new body. Yeah. We'll feel so alive. And then we'll meet the ones who have gone on before. You won't recognize your dad, wow. you know, because you'll say, who's that good looking young man? My and God. all of us be strong, healthy, young, forever. You know, we can't imagine it because this will, we become accustomed to all the aches and the pains and the shortcomings and limitations. We can't imagine heaven, you know. I, I, I really don't want to go there. You know, some people, if they're, they're true, all right, and sincere, they will probably say, I, I really don't want to go there. You can't imagine. Yeah. God made this life. God made your body. If you enjoy what you have in your body and all the senses and all that, imagine the glorified body we'll have in heaven one day. It hit me, you know, listening to you earlier today somewhere that this city doesn't just represent, when you come here, it doesn't just represent where Jesus walked. Mm -hmm. It represents where Jesus is it's going to walk. Yes. It's, he's coming back. And he's going to rule from he's here. Gonna he's going to rule from here. From here. This city represents the past, the present, and the future. Mm. Expedition Promised Land. Right here, the Temple Mount. Pastor, what do you want to kind of talk about from this epic location? Right now, we are what we call the heart of Jerusalem, where the temple used to stand above there, where the Dome of the Rock is right now. The Temple of Solomon, the Temple of Herod. And uh, that's the place where Jesus says, make not my father's house a house of merchandise, mm. but he calls it my father's house. So even Jesus called the temple then, my father's house, right? And God ordained this to be a holy city, although the history of Jerusalem belies that fact, but it's gonna be a holy city because he's coming back to this city, Jerusalem. His feet will touch on the Mount of Olives, and then he's gonna come down right here and reign right here in Jerusalem. I mean, what is the very thing that God wants us to focus on 
that's the greatest thing in the temple, you will say Shekinah glory. Where do you find his Shekinah glory? In the Holy of Holies. Of all the places in Israel, where will you say is the holiest city? You will say Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, where would you say is the holiest spot? The holiest, holy of holies. <laughs> You'll say in the temple, right in the holy of holies. Well, what's right in the center of the holy of holies? Hmm. The mercy seat, hmm. where the blood is sprinkled. We need to realize that true holiness with God is about the finished work of Jesus. Where if we believe on the, on the Lord Jesus and His finished work, the blood on the mercy seat. Notice the law is under the mercy seat. God says, don't take it out. The moment you take it out, like the people of Bet, Bet, Bet Shemesh, uh, many of them were, many of them died in one fell swoop. What were they doing? They are taking out the law, the Ten Commandments. In order for you to do that, you have to push away the mercy seat. If you watch the Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know. <laughs> and uh, when they push away the mercy seat and brought out the law, there was death. Yeah. And God wants us to always remember that grace is higher than the law. Mm. Grace has come. Moses represents the law, but the Son, Jesus Christ, mm. represents grace. Pastor, I've been here, you know, more than a hundred times, and I've never experienced someone looking into the camera and giving an altar call. Think of, think of what an opportunity it is yes. in the midst of where we are and the original mercy seat being right over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful place to lead people yes. to Jesus. Yes. Please. You know, in the teaching of the mercy seat, which is the Ark of the Covenant, in the Temple of Solomon, the Ark was right in the Holy of Holies. And what does the Ark of the Covenant represent? Our Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. The gold represents His deity. The wood, the rectangular wood, represents His humanity. He's both God and man. The lid, they call it the Kipporeth in Hebrew. The mercy seat represents His finished work on the cross. That's where the blood is sprinkled. But where is the law? The Ten Commandments is put under the mercy seat. And God says, when I see the blood, I don't see your sin. I don't see your law breaking. But has the blood been shed? Yes, the true blood of Jesus, the true blood of the atonement has been shed outside the gates of Jerusalem. And the blood has been sprinkled on the real substance, the real mercy seat, the throne of God. Today, the throne of God is no longer the throne of judgment, it's the throne of grace. And what is grace? Undeserved, unmerited favor, unearned favor. And the Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace to find grace or favor in time of need and mercy. Now think about it. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace in our time of need. What is mercy? Mercy is not getting the judgment you do deserve. Wow. What is grace? Grace is getting all the blessings and the favor that you don't deserve. Amen. So you get both. Amen. At the throne of grace. And that's where, where we, 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 we have an access to God through the throne of grace, our Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe on Jesus, you shall be saved and your entire household because here's where God wrought His redemption work. There's no other salvation found in any other name but the name of Jesus. There is no other way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Perhaps right now you're saying, you know, Pastor Prince, if if my heart stops beating tonight, I'm not sure if heaven is my home and all my sins are forgiven. The Bible says these things are written that you may know you have eternal life. If that is you, just pray this prayer with me right now. Let's invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come into our lives. Thank Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love for me. I thank you that you died on the cross for my sins. I confess you, Jesus Christ, you are my Lord. Jesus Christ is my Lord, and I believe God has raised you from the dead. God is now my Father, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Thank you, Lord. Is now my Father, in Jesus' name. Mm. Friend, if you pray that prayer, you are now a child of God. Your sins are completely forgiven, past, present, and future. Amen.
all things are new in your life. Wow, Expedition Mercy Seat is the new name of our special. Think of it, Promised Land, Mercy Seat. You could have talked about, you know, 1967 when Israel finally reunified the, mm -hmm. the city of Jerusalem. You could have talked about all sorts. You, of course, you're, you're gonna automatically default to the throne of grace. And mm -hmm. if somebody, let's say, is new to this journey, what, right. what, are you, what are you actually saying when we talk about the mercy seat, the grace, the throne of grace? What are we, what are we actually talking about? We're talking about a different dispensation okay. compared to what the Jewish people were under, the law. We are no longer under the law. We are under grace. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Mm. See, the law was given, you can give from a distance. I can send you an email, right? But I came, I came to Israel. See, it's very personal. The grace and truth came by the son. The law was given by a servant. Now, the very first miracle of Jesus was turning the water into wine. The first judgment miracle of Moses was to turn water into blood. Wow. It's like a picture of the law resulting in death, or when Jesus turned the water into wine, it resulted in life and celebration. Grace has come. The law is all about demand, demand, you shall not, you shall not. That's the essence of the law, demand. And nothing wrong with, with the demands. They are perfect and they are holy. But unfortunately, we are bankrupt. God is demanding righteousness from men, from sinfully bankrupt men. But grace is all about supply. Hmm. I'll supply you the righteousness that you don't have. I'll supply you the wisdom that you don't have. I'll supply you the holiness even that you crave for. It's all a gift. The Bible says our hearts in the book of Acts are purified by faith. Have you heard that before? The hearts can be purified by faith. So it's crucial that we unveil Jesus to the people in all his loveliness, beauties, glories and excellencies, and his finished work, his perfect finished work. It takes the Holy Spirit to preach grace because law is natural. Tell me, do good, get good. Do bad, get bad. I understand. Everyone in the world understands that. Every philosophy, every approach to God understands that. But to say that I can receive good I don't deserve because another received the bad that I deserved. Hmm. Wow. Wow. That takes the Holy Spirit. To unveil the loveliness of Jesus takes the Holy Spirit to say, don't do this, don't do that from the pulpit, all right? Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. It's easy, you don't, you don't need the Holy Spirit. There are people who are not Christians who teach, don't do this, don't do that. Morality, but there's no power to do it. Yeah. But to unveil the beauty of Jesus mm. takes the Holy Spirit. We are anointed to glorify Jesus. The Holy Spirit has come for one reason, and that's to glorify Jesus. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions in comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.